previs was a massive part of our process. We we prevised about an hour of the movie in the end, and we had um, three. We had third floor, um, envisage, and proof working with us. We had three companies, so that we could spread much like we do in post with us. So we could get the best people working on it, and we split them across sequences. Pablo was the the key person who went kind of oversaw what was going on with the characters and we had frame a frame store animation team which bled into all of them and supported everyone and we had a even a joint asset unit between all of them that shared everything so again it was a collaborative process and what it it was really key to work out because the cre on in, in the first film the, the creatures were the key thing to the action sequences and we had to discover what they were going to do how um and discover the story. I mean, we had the, the script for the action sequences was, it was there, the structure was there, but it wasn't there in detail because David really wanted us to discover that rather than JK Rowling sort of trying to do that with writing. So it became a, a, a tool for David to, with us to discover the story of that sequence. So often there would be things that came out of previews that weren't in the script. Um, but eventually made it to the film because it would be a combination of boards that would have come and then so often for some sequences we started without boards and we'd just do previous boards and come up with story ideas. So it was massively important, I think, to the, 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 final, the final process. And then as we moved into post-production, so as about three weeks, four weeks into filming, that unit began to turn into the post unit. So we had, we could take previs that we'd done and start to put it into the plates that we'd shot so that Mark Day when he was cutting the film was actually cutting with the creatures rather than blank plates and that post his unit continued from then until the first audience screening so we 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 in the end you know the original cut of the film was much longer we post visited about two and a half thousand shots there was one and a half thousand shots in the film so we had so every shot had a creature in it had New York in it had an effect in but all rough, so that, that so that David could cut, so the audience were watching something that had all the story elements in there, and that we could let our VFX facilities get on and do the real work, um, and not have to be diverted by having to do temps and all that sort of stuff. So it was a David found that a really useful process, and I think it was great to not because we I think you'd suffered before from just getting empty plates, then a facility you'd spend ages putting something together, and then you. I know they changed the edit again. Oh God! Like, as we could do that bit very quickly um, in house, effectively, we had a team of about fifty people doing that. So it was quite a, you know, and we made it a little mini facility. We had people match moving, we had people rotoring, we had people comping, um, plus all of the the, the I say the, the companies all sharing stuff. So again, it was you know, again it was got you know it had its moments of of toughness towards deliveries as it, as it always does but I think everybody found it because again it was a, a good creative process laid the blueprint of the film we experimented with it but because David David shoots in a very kind of we didn't want to bound him bind him with technology with stuff like the Narlac um, capture stuff that we did we would we shot the scene on the set with Ron there being Narlac off camera and so we could get all of the performance we needed and then we moved to a scaled set that we'd built so the guys could sit there on big blocks and have the correct eye line and just let David direct the scene and we would just sat back and let the stuff do what it needed to do. But in terms of we didn't have any real I mean the case the case scene it just was the most kind of I guess virtual well, the, the the cameras really had to tell the story. It was originally designed as a ten minute long shot. We chopped it up in the end and Put more coverage in but really that was previs that we we kind of copied and i think the key there is is just making sure because i i was never a fan of previs in that previs always came up with impossible stuff that you could never film as i think our challenge was was to try and make stuff that you know philippe ruslow the dp absolutely was like sure yeah this is a technocrane from here to here and it really felt with the k scene in particular when we stood on that set in January, a year after we'd started conceiving the whole thing, a plan had come together because we shot pretty much the previs, everything where the camera bases could be and everything was, was possible. Um, so really that's where it came into, its, came into its own, really, rather than actually getting into yeah, any, any virtual stuff. I think FMX is 
relevant because it's great. I mean, it's my first time at FMX, believe it. After, after 20 years in the <laughs> frame store, I've finally made it to Stuttgart. So it's um, exciting. But um, I, I see it as relevant because it's always great to see that new, that new generation coming through. And it's, uh, as I say, seeing, seeing the students out there, us being able to inspire them to want to <laughs> come, and, come and join the VFX industry, join us on this journey. And also just to see that collaborate, I mean, literally just as I have done in the last two hours, just bump into lots of people and networking. It's just um, kind of, it feels very kind of European. <laughs> it's kind of very, um, it's just a, you know, smaller than what you would get in, in, in America, I guess. But, um, but just that kind of being able to bump into people, be able to realise, as I am now making Fantastic Beast 2, be able to meet people that I want to work with and stuff like that so it's different levels now I guess because as even though I'm still at Framestore I'm still wanting to work with interesting companies who I can meet here but also meet people who are interested in I just always want to give something back you know I started as a runner from art school didn't couldn't you switch on a computer when I started and I learnt as an apprenticeship and work, work my way up and you just want to inspire people to do the same thing.